And then I did all the construction myself. I think I spent 5,000 bucks in materials, which is unbelievably uncommon, right, in today's market. Yeah. But even then was uncommon, like it yeah. was low. Uh, I did it evenings and weekends. I did it myself, right? And so I was into that deal for like 245 plus closing costs, 250, nice. somewhere in there. Yeah. Unheard of. I didn't even bother refinancing. What is up, you guys? Matt McKeever here with Ryan Carr. And so today we're just going to dive into his backstory. So Ryan and I have kind of bumped up against each other in some social media situations, but we've never actually got to sit down and meet each other. So we actually just finished uh, a special lunch that our buddy Irwin, Mr. Hamilton, just threw uh, for Don Campbell. So we thought, hey, why not just run across the street? We'll set up here, take over a little bit of Jack Astor's and dive into Ryan's backstory to share with you guys. So yeah. if you don't mind, let's just get started. You were telling me you originally got started with flips. So yeah. can we just... Let's start right there and get into it. Yeah, sure. So I was uh, I was a mechanic. I went to school. Yeah. I went to Durham College in Durham region, uh, Ontario, as a mechanic. Graduated from there. Got uh, got some skills like working with my hands and stuff. And I got to building armored cars as yeah. as like my full time nine to five. And while I was building armored cars, which is a super cool job, um, I got into doing some real estate. And yeah. so so real estate for me started off as a side hustle. Um, and then it turned into like full-time hustle, which is super cool. But um, while I was while I was working my full-time job, I was doing some flips. So my wife and I had bought our first house, which was our principal residence, um, bank sale property. Really, really tough. My realtor even said, like, "Are you sure you want to buy this thing? Like, this is this is pretty 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 rough for your first property." I'm like, "Yeah, you know, we want a challenge. It had some mm -hmm. had some acreage, so we, you know, we thought that was neat." And um, we got working on that property, and as we did, and as we started to get good with our hands and started to understand the market. The realtor called me up again and she's like, hey, you ever thought about buying a second property? I'm like, oh my God, we have no money. Like, how are we gonna do this? Long story short, we ended up being able to, to make that one happen. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was tough. The mortgage rules were different at that time than they are today, 2018. Um, so this was maybe five, six years ago. They were a little bit more lax then, but um, we, we were able to scrape that one together. So that, that was our first two properties. Um, and over the next 12 months following that, we were able to flip them, make a few bucks, and that was my entrance way into right. real estate. So maybe taking a step back and talking about yeah. this realtor. Yeah. It sounds like a completely <laughs> different experience than I had with any of the realtors I started. Well, Thankfully I mean, now I have Jeff Weibel, but my experience was when I first got invested in real estate investing was most realtors weren't actually listening to what I was saying, right? right? So right. they'd want to go show me three to five properties yeah. and be like, hey Matt, which one do you want to buy? Yeah. None of them fit my metric. Where yeah, it sounds yeah. like not only did your realtor understand what you were about, yeah. but they were actually actively helping you. So were you keeping the realtor up to date as you were working on that first project property? Is that why they thought of you when the next <laughs> one came up or what? What yeah. sort of relationship did you have there? Yeah, I mean, there she was part of a, a real estate brokerage that was very team oriented. So they're very focused on what people want, how people feel, the emotional side of the business, right? Mm -hmm. So she was very in tune with that and still continues to be to this day. Um, what was really cool about her is that she knew how much to push, but yeah. not too much to be pushy. Yeah. Right. And that was so important because very easily can you be misconstrued by anybody in the investment community or real estate community or use car sales or like any of these salesy positions. Yeah. Um, you know, that can be taken the wrong way. And she she nailed it. Obviously, yeah, here we are. So, so she nailed it. Did you spend a lot of time finding the right realtor or did you stumble into it? <laughs> you a referral? No, we went on Google. <laughs> We're like realtor Durham region. Right. We went on wow. Google. These people happen to be the, I guess, the top yeah. pay-per-click ad or whatever it was, and, and we set up a meeting, we hit it off, um, and the cool thing was that like it wasn't just transactional. I'm very relationship-based, mm -hmm. so I, I don't want to just like I don't just want to do like a one and done. I want to do something that is long-term, that you can call on that person, you can rely on that person, and, and that's not just true with realtors, but just yeah. business in like general. Like any business relationship. One hundred percent. But yeah, she ended up being a good friend of ours. She ended up at our wedding and like we would go for dinners and stuff. And now she actually invests with me, which, oh, is, wow. which is super cool. That's awesome to see you full circle. It has. It so has. you did these two properties, yeah. starting with flipping, and then you kept flipping for a bit? Yeah, we did, uh, oh, no, actually we did two, two flips. Um, a couple of buy and holds, then I took on a partner. So what caused you to decide to switch from flipping into buy and holds? Because I know a lot yeah. of like first time investors get stuck up on which strategy should I tackle, right? Which strategy yeah, do yeah. I want to use? Man, I don't think there's a real right answer like to blanket everything, but for me, um, the cash flow numbers were pretty good at mm -hmm. that time. I was able to find some off-market deals and some on-market deals that the equity side was there as well. So I'm like, hey, I've heard about this buy, fix, refi thing. Yeah. Why don't we try that out? I was just getting 
going into construction. I was just hiring full-time staff at that time. So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. It's going to pay me this much per month. The fundamentals look good. Let's try the refi thing and, uh, and see where it goes. So for me, it was just a matter of exploration, not necessarily knowing like, hey, this is what I need or this is what I want. Yeah. I'm like, that looks pretty cool. Let's try it. So for the flipping business, you yep. started building up internally a team, like a construction crew. Did I understand that right? Yeah, yeah. So, so now, like to this day, yeah. I've got full-time staff. Yeah. Um, the business has evolved considerably. But I mean, after the first two deals that we did, like I did all those my all that work myself. Like so I'm hanging paint, drywall and I'm yeah. painting and I'm I'm crying. I'm so tired and I'm working a nine to five, right? Um, which a lot of people start at. Um, yeah, you, you did the same, right? You exactly. were just saying you did the yeah. pharmacy thing, and um, that's that's so cool. But when I did my third deal, I didn't have a job to fall back on. Right, so I was like, this was my job. Yeah. So what I would have been paying somebody else, I was now paying myself, and I was getting it back on the equity side. So that's that's kind of how that grew. Gotcha. Yeah. So from day one getting into flips, how were you running your numbers? Like, did mm -hmm. you were you buying seventy cents on the dollar? Like, what? <laughs> like, did you know this terminology? Had you done a lot of research, or was it, hey, I'm decent with my hands. I think yeah. I can take this property that's not nice and make it nice, and hopefully I make money. Yeah. How you approach yeah, the yeah. business? Man, so I didn't have any coaching up until this year. I was like 100% self-taught. Yeah. Um, Did you I do a lot of networking and stuff, or were you like lone even. wolf, like just? I was, okay. I was lone wolf for sure. I was trailblazing. So um, I read a lot of YouTube, or like I watched a lot of YouTube. Yeah. I read a lot of Google. Um, and this is all free stuff that like anybody in the audience, anybody watching can do. Like mm -hmm. exhaust all of your free resources before you go out and, and pay somebody for so something. So any tips just to interrupt for some of those free resources? Like what are your favorite blogs or? Yeah, so go to Google, yeah. type in buy, fix, refinance, type in basement apartment, you know, um, type in like Canadian real estate guru, go to YouTube, type in the same things because they're yeah. linked, right? Mm -hmm. um, I watched a ton of Mike Holmes. Yeah. Right, and I didn't watch it for the entertainment value. I watched it for what was going on behind. Yeah. Right. So when you see the lead characters talking about what they're doing in the property, that's really cool. But I want to see the guy hanging the tile, and I want to know the material that he's hanging the tile on. Mm -hmm. Right. And you could see that. What kind of spray foam are they using? Like these kinds of things. Yeah. When you look beyond, and you really pay attention to the details. Oh man, there. there's so much information there. And like, like I think we used 160 gigabytes of data in one month, right? Because we were just streaming like crazy, YouTube yeah. videos and HDTV. I mean, the Scott McGilvery stuff is, is widely yeah, popular. Yeah, so like you can go on, I think, hdtv.ca and like it's Watch all, it all for free. For free. Yeah. It's all free. Yeah, you don't even need a cable or a satellite subscription. You don't, you don't. So just go online, start there, you know, type in some of the bigger keywords that you mm -hmm. would typically find about basement apartments or two units or flips or whatever you're doing, yeah. rent to owns work it back and at some point you're going to start to find commonalities in your searches like if you realize out of the 10 key search terms that um, you like the most maybe let's just say basement apartment right yeah uh, you'll realize that hey you know basement apartment really is the way that that i'm leaning towards as opposed to flips or rent to own like you'll just see that in your mm -hmm. search terms right and then you'll kind of know at a very pre preliminary level what you like yeah and then you try it yeah. You gotta go and try it. Go do. Like I'm so big on going and doing. You can't yeah. just read about it in a book. You gotta get out there. You gotta you gotta do it. So That's when good. you decided to get started into the cash flowing properties, mm -hmm. what sort of metrics were you using? Did you have some rules of thumb in order to determine what a good deal was? Or yeah, I so I like the number of a thousand bucks a month. I wanted a thousand bucks a month in cash flow. That's all I wanted. Yeah. Right. Um, I understood the equity side, but not as much as as cash mm -hmm. flow because it was real. Like yeah. at the end of the month, you see this number. That's real. That's yeah. all I understood. It's something you can go use. Hundred percent. And um, you know, I started to understand the equity side a little bit later on, but like I was managing the property myself. I was doing all the renovations. The yeah. property prices, this was like five years back, were half of what they are today. Yeah. So I mean, that was a very achievable number, mm -hmm. you know, especially when we went from, uh, like you could do that on a five down deal. When yeah. you could buy a rental lot five down. Now we're at 20 down deals or beyond, mm -hmm. right? Harder to hit those numbers. But again, you know, that was my number when I started. I want a thousand bucks. So like, would you be just like break down the basic mm -hmm. investment? So is that buying like a $300,000 single family home or what, what sort of numbers are you looking at? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the first property I did that we did a conversion. Got to think, I'm going back. <laughs> Holy smokes. Uh, this would have been like 20. 12, okay. 2013 ish, so five years ago, I paid 237 for that property. It had a non legal basement suite, and this was before basement apartments were like really mainstream. Yeah. Right? Because like, recently Ontario's came out yeah. favorably on them. And yeah, so this, this property, I, I didn't know, but because it had the non legal basement suite prior to a certain date, which I was told 1996, 
I was actually able to get that retrofitted before the province gotcha. said, hey, let's, you know, let's densify, yeah. right? So I had to sift through that, and then I did all the construction myself. I think I spent 5,000 bucks in materials, which is unbelievably uncommon, yeah. right, in today's market, yeah. but even then was uncommon, like it yeah. was low. Uh, I did it evenings and weekends, I did it myself, right? And so I was into that deal for like, 245 plus closing costs, 250, nice. somewhere in there. Yeah, unheard of. I didn't even bother refinancing because, <laughs> like, like what's 5,000 bucks? You know, yeah. at, at that time, that much tied into it. It was more to transact the property and turn it over mm -hmm. than it was to just keep the 5,000 out of pocket. And then, so what were you able to rent it out for? Yeah, so we were like 1,300 up, 1,350 up, uh, which was a three bed, one bath, and then. Thousand eleven fifty down, okay, something like great. that. So, so by the time, right within that one percent rule that we love to talk about on my channel. Absolutely, yeah, it was there. Perfect, it was there. And so were the tenants paying utilities or yeah. utilities included? Tenants so were paying utilities. So you separately utilities. metered it, or uh, was already separately metered? No, that one didn't have separate meters. Oh, okay. That one, I, I've started doing that since. Yeah. But I mean, that one there, it was real basic rentals. Whatever I could tackle myself, we did. Um, whatever took like major building permits and all this stuff, we're like, okay, let's let's shy away from as many building permits as we have to. Yeah. And only get what we need to yeah. get to keep it really, you know, real mainstream. Keep it really easy. Keep the cost yeah. down. Yeah. So. Makes sense to me. Yeah. So let's. So that's that's Ryan's backstory. Let's fast forward to today. Yeah. End of 2018. Oh boy. What, what's it look like now, your real estate portfolio? It's a full business. So yeah. I've got full-time staff, we've got corporations, um, we've got property management, we've got construction crews. Uh, right now I have three full-time construction crews going, um, one of nice. which is my own full-time staff, or yeah. my own full-time crew mm -hmm. of like T4 employees, um, and two sub-crews that I bring on when we get busy and we're like so busy right and now. So, so you're still focusing on the Durham area and doing yep. single family homes with basement suites? Yeah, so there's basement suites. Um, there's some multifamily in the mix now. There's new construction and development. Uh, so we've sort of yeah. branched out from just a traditional basement apartment mm -hmm. into a bunch of different models for second suites as well. But then over and above that, uh, some other some other cool opportunities. That's awesome. And yeah. so what does 2019 hold? Like, yeah. are you focusing on growing just more of the same or are you still going to constantly experiment with new types of investments? Yeah, so I really like real estate. For me, it's fun. I really do enjoy it. So, I mean, my business is very real estate centric, um, but I do want to add in a lot more social media awareness because, yeah. you know, like we talked about before the show, social media is huge. Like, that's how we can get so this fun. content yeah. to all these people watching. Um, mm -hmm. So I want to grow that side. I want to grow the earned income side just to hedge the way that the market is going like yeah we've seen a bull run for so long yeah right especially like your period of time investing in Durham it's a completely it's been different all bull market run. Than, yeah it's been all bull run mm -hmm. like uh, it's been incredible for anybody yeah. that bought anything even if you really sucked at it yeah. in 2012 like you really sucked and overpaid mm -hmm. you're doing okay now if you still got yeah. that place so the market's been very forgiving for somebody that's learning um, but yeah for 2019 I want to hedge a little bit and I want to do a little bit more income whether that's flips or coaching or um, construction or property management like just something that's 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 paid now as opposed to mm -hmm. relying on the market fundamentals I want to make sure that we hedge in case we do have a downturn because it is it is a very real possibility mm -hmm. yeah yeah no I think that that's that's great advice and so one thing I kind of want to just add to for my audience and maybe discuss a little bit further with you mm -hmm. so often I get people that you know they watch a few of my YouTube videos they get amped up they're really excited and they're yeah. like okay I'm gonna have like five corporations they're gonna do this I'm gonna need to hire yeah. a full-time crew and I think <laughs> the thing I really want to highlight with your story is you built it a piece at a time, right? Yes. And you take what you have existing and you add on to that infrastructure rather than trying to create the perfect corporate structure or the perfect renovation crew or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. I just, I really want to highlight for people that that key of going to take action, that yeah. that's actually the thing that separates successful investors from yeah. dreamers. It's true. Um, it's true. It'll never be perfect. Right? Yeah. Like even when you get that perfect crew built, there's always somebody off sick. Mm -hmm. Or even when you get that 10, 10 rental property number that some people want, or 100 doors or whatever it is, yeah. right? there's always gonna be problems. So you gotta get like, get your mindset the majority of the way, and then the final 30%, you'll just figure it as you go. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Awesome, so before we wrap up, where can people find you? What's the best way for someone to reach out to you? rwcarinvestment.com is my website, awesome. or Facebook is the best place to get me. I'm on Facebook quite a All bit, right. so. So we'll throw a link in the video description down That's below. You can check it out there. Smash that like button if you enjoyed this video. If you guys want to see more videos with Ryan, jump in that comment section, let us know, give us some feedback, and I'd love to sit down with Ryan, 
maybe we'll actually plan a proper video. Yeah. Maybe check out some projects, do all that cool stuff. So until next time, guys, remember, making money is a team sport. There's more than enough money in this world for us to all make it, but if you're not saving it, I mean, like, what's the point? Thanks, guys. Bye.